G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Now I did promise you all that I would add to my little animal doll series and so today we've got a little Miss Kitty here. I've been wanting to make one of these for a while. Now the pattern is slightly different because I've given you the option of jointing the head. So, but all of the other little um, animals in this series are all interchangeable with this pattern. So I hope you'll enjoy making her. So I have her pattern all ready for you. And of course it's free and it's in the description box below. You just need to click on that link and it will give you your free pattern templates. When you go to print those out, make sure you set your printer in the, print, in the settings to printed actual size. That way all of your little pattern pieces will be correct. I put a little size measurement guide on the side of the templates as well for you. So you can check that out. And I always include all of the seam allowances in my patterns. It's easier for everybody. So let's get busy making little Miss Kitty. So let's get started by seeing what we're going to need to make our little cat doll. Now this doll is part of a series of animal dolls that I have. This is the little bunny in the series and I also have the little fox and the little bear. And you've got little boy clothes there or little girl overalls whatever you like but there's a couple of options there for you i'm going to be using the little skirt pattern for my little cat doll just as i have on this one and these ones have the head sewn into place now this pattern i'm changing it's a little different because it has a back opening in the back so that we can joint the head and this is going to allow us to use fabric for the head um, if you're making these to be loved by a child, actually carried around and loved by a child, fabric is definitely more durable than the felt. The felt does tend, does tend to rub up there. Um, so fabric is a better choice. So that's what we're doing with the cat today. But if you want to make the cat, if you have this little bunny pattern and you've already made it up, you know how to do that body and you just want to sew the head on, you can definitely take this little cat head and attach it to this body they are all interchangeable so just remember that well, I'm going to go ahead and be jointing this one today so I can show you um, how to do that so my fir uh, first pieces you will need are your little leg pieces and I'm making a little grey kitty and I've got those that's just quilting cotton with my fusible woven interfacing on the back there and a medium weight. So we have those are our little legs. And then we need our two back torso pieces. And this is the opening there that I was talking about. It's gonna be in the back there. That allows us to get to that neck there. So that's in a pretty print. And that's the print I've chosen to be my little dress. So this is the front torso. Also with that interfacing applied, I'm going to be adding a little trim to my front torso and I'm just gonna use a little bit of a lace trim there. I'm also going to show you how to make a little Peter Pan style collar for this one. You can only do this collar if you're jointing the neck just because of the way that we attach it. So that one is just cut from felt with interfacing in whatever color suits your project. That one will sit there around the neck. I'm going to add a couple of little buttons on that front there. Probably a little pearl at the neckline there and I will be making, I will be adding the little skirt, which I've already made up there. So you can see that's going to be such a pretty little result with the gray. You might be making overalls, whatever you choose. Just remember what you choose for that torso section is, is relevant to that. So you're also going to need your little ears. So we've got our two little ear pieces, two pairs of ears there. I've got the print on the back and salmon color in the middle. That's that little ear all put together. One of them there already. We're also going to need little arms and I have those cut and ready and I already have one of my little arms prepared there. You can see that gray again. And then we're going to need our head pieces. So this is a traditional three piece little head, which is a little more, uh, it gives us a better shape than perhaps the other ones. So, We've got our two side head pieces and we have a contrasting front muzzle piece that we're going to add in and then we have that center head gusset and that just allows us to break up that head pattern add a bit of color there and we will also need our little eyes i'm going to be using glass teddy bear eyes i'm going to be using this little blue crystal color i will show you a little trick about how to work with these eyes because you can lose a lot of color with these 
when you add them to your project. I'll show you how to change that. Um, I'm using 12 millimeter this time because cat's eyes generally tend to be quite uh, that little bit bigger. Um, but of course, this is just a little storybook um, little cat. You, you can have any eyes you like. You can have little tiny black buttons, whatever you like. You, you can see that you'll be able to do all sorts of different things with the eyes. But this is what I'm going for. So they're 12 millimeter. We're also going to need a little nose template. We're going to be embroidering over this little template, but this is just a piece of felt with some fusible webbing on the back just for a bit of strength and it makes it easier to cut out that little shape. We will be gluing that on. So we will need some clear craft glue also. Something suitable for fabric. You'll need some pearl thread or embroidery threads for doing our little mouth and our stitching over our nose and our, of course our extra strong threads for some of our hand sewing and closing and you're going to need your joint so if you're jointing you're going to need your little joint this is a 30 millimeter neck joint these are the joints that i make up myself it's a simple nut and bolt design i've actually got a video that shows you how i put them together I'm going to put the link up the top there for you to have a look at that. You might be using alternatively a cotter pin joint or if you're used to using joints, you just use what you have. But remember that it is 30 millimeters. If you're using my type of joint, we'll need a little bit of super glue to drop in that nut at the end. We're going to be filling with polyester filling um, and that's about it. So let's get started at the beginning and we're going to start with our little torso section so we're going to take our back torso pieces and the first thing i like to do you've got a couple of marks on the back of those pieces that you should have transferred from your pattern and that shows you where those openings are i like to sew a close zigzag stitch on the edge of each of those openings because it just stops any kind of stretching and also stops the fraying for when we go to sew that little opening closed we want it all neat and tidy so once you've done that we're going to just put right sides together and line that all up and then we're just going to stitch this is from the base of the torso up to that mark make sure you're really back and forth on those opening beginnings and then we're going from this mark to the top neck edge I sew these, all of the seams on this project, two times for strength because we are going to be packing some filling in there quite tight. I also have my, my seam allowances are four millimetres and it's important to keep to that throughout this project so that all of the corresponding pieces fit nicely. And I have my machine stitch length set at number two and i i actually always use a jeans needle for all of my sewing so if you want to give that a try you'll find that um, it it just handles it all better we do have quite a few layers to go through at times so go ahead and get those little seams first seam stitched in so there i've got my little back seam sewn you can see that little opening there and i've gone ahead and pressed those seams open and flat and also pressed that little opening in as well so we've got a nice neat finish there uh, do do bother to press in between our little um, our little sewing sections because it really does help you put it all together so now our next step is to add our torso pieces to our front and back leg sections now at the moment the front and leg sections are not a back and front they're both exactly the same I'm going to do the same with the front. You can see there that I've gone ahead and stitched into place my piece of lace down the front. So anything you want to add to this front bodice here, you can do that now. So I'm just going to line those up and I'm going to do the same thing and I'm just going to stitch across, keeping to my seam allowance two times on each of those. So once you have your front and back pieces assembled and you can see I've gone ahead and added my little buttons there too because it's easier to add uh, things now rather than after your doll is all put together. So now we're just going to put right sides together with those pieces, we're going to line them all up, you can use your clips or your pins and we are going to sew the outside seam. Now we're going to sew from the neck 
to the top of the shoulder here. We're going to leave this little box section open and then we're going to sew from here all the way down, around, all the way up and repeat on the other side. Finish here, leave this little box section open and then just stitch our little shoulder next section there. Again, I will sew that uh, seam, seam allowance four millimeters and I will sew it two times. So there we have our body section all stitched together. I've taken my pinking shears and I've just sewn that inside, uh, sorry, just clipped that inside leg seam just a little, just notch that edge and just those very end of those little feet curves there. If you don't have pinking shears, just a few little snips in that little obvious very tight curve there will help when we turn it through to give us a nice rounded edge. So our next step is to get our little shoulder seams ready for our little arms. So what I've done there is I've already done it on this side. I've just gone in through the neck there and I've actually finger pressed open the little seam above that little box open section there. I've pressed that one nice and flat and the one below nice and flat. And all we're going to do is pull in that little, pull apart those little sides and line up those two seams there. Hope you can see that. It's going to keep them pressed nice and flat, both of those seams. Push everything else out the way. And I'm just going to pop a little clip on there to keep those seams open and that little shoulder folded out. And I'm going to have those sitting there while I get my arms ready to go in there. So it's just going to encourage those little seams to stay nice and flat. Just makes it easier for us to add those arms. So because we add the arms before we turn the body through. So this is my little completed arm. And all we need to do is put our right sides together if we, as we have with those two pieces. We're going to leave this top edge open. Stay with our nice small little seam allowance and we're going to go back and forth all the way around and back and forth at the top there. Again, I'm going to sew that one two times. So there I have my little arm stitched up and just turned through. They're very fine little arms. So you're turning through, you can do it two, one, two ways. You can either go in with your forceps and grab the end, clip your, clamp your forceps together and pull those little arms over the end. Alternatively, you can grab the end, clamp your forceps and do the same thing, bring it back on itself. Um, it's, it's tricky for me too, trust me. But this is a very petite little doll, so she does need her little petite arms. So now I'm going to go ahead and just add some filling and it's just a little bit of a, at a time. I'm going to use my forceps again because it's the best way to tuck filling in a very narrow space. I'll just take that filling all the way down to the end there and I'm going to pack these little arms nice and firm because they're going to have a lot of loving and a lot of hand holding hopefully from some little lovely child. So just tucking those in little pieces at a time and I'm going to fill that one up you can see here that I fill till about, it's about an inch from the end. So absolutely no filling in that top section there. But you can see quite firmly packed as we go lower down. So once you've got that one filled up, then I just take it to the machine and I close that top opening with a little machine stitch right close to the edge. So now we have our little arms ready to go into our body. Now we're going to do, obviously, just one at a time. And we're going to be going in from the neck and we need to make sure that these little arms are facing forwards. So the little curve is facing forwards and we're going to tuck them in to that little opening that we've left there. Now I'm going to take that little clip off and we just want to tuck that end in and a, a good way is to reach in and pull that one, that little arm through with your forceps. And we just want to have them extend out just a little because we want to make sure we absolutely capture 
the end of that little arm so you can see it's now and it fits perfectly which is why I always say you've got to watch your seam allowances all the way through so that everything fits so hopefully you can see that there now that little end of that arm is poking out of that shoulder we've got the look because this is our back here that back opening we've got our little arms facing forwards and we're going to stitch just straight across I stitch across about three times back and forth within that seam allowance again four millimeters from this edge from the shoulder edge but do have a little of your arm extending so that it's really captured and while this might seem a little bit fiddly it's the absolute most secure way to sew in a little arm in a, a little child's uh, lovey body um, that will last and also that it's very safe and also we still get all that lovely mobility of the arm by doing it this way so I'm going to stitch that one across then I'm going to repeat the same with the other side making sure that that little arm that little hand is also curved forwards so now I have those two little arms stitched into place there you can see stitch across that shoulder section there and now we just need to turn that body through and as I said before you can just start at the end grab the end of those little legs and you can push them all the way through I'm going to take the first leg all the way through up through that neck there then I'm going to do exactly the same with the other leg pull that little body through get all of those seams rolled out so that has my little body all turned through I've rolled out those seams between my fingertips and I've actually taken it to the iron and given that lower section a press the reason for that is now we're going to mark in our lines which are going to be our stitching lines which give our little uh, legs a little bend section on the hips there so I've given you a little template which is a little leg stitching guide and all you need to do is line that up with the curve make sure it's nice and even on both sides and you just need to rule those lines in across there you might be able to see that there I've just lightly drawn those in and they're ready now for when we have filled those little legs but we need to obviously we need to rule those lines now while everything is, is flat so our next step from here is to go ahead and just as we did those little arms we're just going to I'm going to go in through the top of the neck and we're going to fill each of those little legs till about just a little a little way away from that that little stitching line there so that we've got room to tuck that one under the machine and sew those little lines in place so fill those little legs leave yourself a little bit of room and and then stitch in and I like to stitch two times on the machine to close those little leg sections off and that gives us a nice little bend for our little doll's leg so I now have that little kitty's body with those little legs stuffed and the, that stitching done so that those that stuffing is not going to come up through here now if you are going to go ahead if you're going to be sewing the head on to this pattern what you would do now is you would go ahead and you would continue to fill the little body section now that you've stitched your legs in place and you would fill that body section right up to the top here and then you would go ahead and do the next step that we're doing here so because I'm jointing the head I need to be able to get into that body section so I've taken my extra strong thread and I've sewn a, a running stitch all around all the way around that top edge about four millimeters just in from the edge and I've just tied my one knot off and I'm just going to pull those in pull that neckline right in just leaving enough room for my little bolt to pass through or maybe you're using a cotter pin joint just enough room for that so I'll tie that off quite tightly and then knot that off three or four times and then we have a little body all ready for our head so now we need to make our little kitty head so we're going to pop that one aside and we're going to start with our side head pieces and our first step with this one is that we have to add our little muzzle sections so we need to have right sides together with this one 
and we're going to sew each of those muzzle pieces in place you'll find that you've got your two little points will just extend from your seam so this section these two little points will just extend a little that's because of your seam allowance there so just line it up right in the middle and we will just stitch that seam across here two times and then I like to give it a press so there you can see those little muzzle pieces in place and I have pressed those seams and I've actually pressed them back towards the back of the head so our next step is to sew our center front chin seam now before we do this if you're going to be sewing the head on rather than jointing it what you can do now is you can go ahead and just turn under a tiny little edge along this piece and this piece and your back head gusset just turn them under make sure that they're all the same that way when you go to sew the head on you don't have to be turning it under so you've got a nice neat clean edge that's just a little tip there for you I'm going to be jointing so I don't need to do that so I'm just going to line up this front center seam this chin seam here and we're going to do the same thing we're going to sew from the top there down to the neck there two times now once you have that seam sewn I like to take that seam and open it out and finger press it open all the way along right down to that neck edge get as open as you can because then when we turn that little front center seam out we've got that lovely smooth curve there which is the front of the little face there the mouth section so get that all pressed out nice open and flat and then we need this one open and flat regardless because now we're going to start to pin in our center gusset this is probably the most challenging part of sewing in 3d for a lot of people but it's largely made difficult by the way that people pin it in so it's quite simple once you know how so uh, first of all you've got a little mark in the nose point of your head gusset and we're putting right sides together of course so I'm going to take my pin through at the seam allowance there of four millimeters and then I'm going to take that pin at the seam allowance four millimeters straight through the center of that little seam there so that's perfectly anchored in at the front there so then I'm going to just line up that edge there I'm going to add another pin and I'm going to take my pin through both of the layers then I'm going to flip my work over and I'm going to take up just a little bit just a little bit of the fabric on one side I'm not going all the way through I'm just catching a little bit of the fabric and I'm pushing that pin head all the way down I'm going to do the same with the other side push my pin through both layers and then just take up just a little bit on that side now I'm just catching that fabric and the pin is all the way down so now that's held beautifully into place and I can pull that side up to match here because we're making that center head gusset fit our side head so again back through that pin taking a little bit up and all the way down repeat so go side to side each time that way you're going to get a nice even little muzzle and do the same thing again pin through both flip it over take a little push that pin all the way down now you can see what's happening is we're getting a little 3d shape shape happening here I'm going to pin this one holding that seam back because we've pressed that seam back I'm going to pin this one to just beyond where that that little seam is 
in and catch your thumb on the other side. Pin head all the way down. And same on this side. And once you've done that, you want to check by looking at that from the front. You see how the, all those, it's, it's, it's already pinned it into the shape that the little head will actually be. So what I want to do now is I want to have a good look and make sure that my two little seams are lined up straight across. Make sure that one hasn't crept up higher than the other. So once they're nice and, and you, you're sure that that's all lined up and in the right spot, I then take my needle and my extra strong thread and I will just simply start just above that little, where that little seam is. Because I only sew the nose in section, the nose section in first. And I find that makes everything come together a lot easier. If you try and sew the entire head gusset in at once, you very rarely get it nice and straight and even. So now I'm just sewing a little overcasting stitch to hold this all in place. That's not helping, is it? So that I can remove my pins. So I'm going to continue this overcasting stitch right round to the other side and remove all of my pins. So there we go, you can see I've got that little uh, section of the nose all stitched in there just with that tacking stitch and now we're going to actually sew the seam. We're going to sew the seam with a stab back stitch. I've got an extra strong thread, a knot in the end, just a single strand. Now we don't sew this section on the machine because there's no way that you'll get that under the machine and around those tight corners and keep it all nice and straight the way it should be. So I do have a video that shows you how to sew the stab back stitch. I'll put the link up the top there for you. But what we do is we come in at the beginning there and we're coming in at our seam allowance which is four millimeters. And I've come in from the underneath to make our first stitch and the knot is holding that there. So my first stitch, now we keep these stitches nice and small. First stitch goes all the way through and then we're gonna come back in the same entry hole where we started. And I like to make two of those stitches there for that starting point. Make sure that you've got that seam pushed nice and flat there. So we're keeping everything nice and flat. I'd like to do this in a different colored thread to show you, but I need it to match my project. So we're just going to come in from behind to create our next stitch. Like I said, keeping those stitches nice and small. And we're going to go back into that exit hole. So the stab back stitch is a fully linked stitch. No spaces in between. Come from behind again. And each time returning into that exit hole that we've come out of just before. Pulling those stitches nice and tight as we go. And what that gives us is a beautifully strong straight seam. And it's the best best stitch to use for sewing, for hand sewing, any kind of a seam. It's fully linked. So back and front it's fully linked and it's very very strong. So I'm going to continue right the way around and I will finish like I did this side with two firm stitches there. And there you can see that back stitch stitch right the way around there and it should really look like a little machine stitch. It should be nicely linked and keeping to your seam allowance all the way around, no changes as you go around the corners. And that will give you the perfect little muzzle. And I always check that front nose section to make sure that I have got that all nice and straight by popping it through. And you can see there that everything is lined up and we've got a nice neat little front there. 
So now turn that one back through and now all we need to do is go ahead and pin each head gusset side around to fit right the way down, right the way to that bottom neck edge, pin it all into place and then you simply just pop it under the machine and stitch right the way down to that neck edge and then do exactly the same with the other side and do make sure that they have come together evenly but these sections you can tuck in under the machine and sew quite well do make sure that you're pulling them out and going around those curves carefully don't have any of because it is a fairly tight curve make sure that you're not having your fabric bunch up on the underneath side so get both of those seams pinned in and sewn so that has our head gusset fully sewn you can see that I've stitched around pinned and stitched around each side and also when you are putting that head gusset piece in all of your stitching and your pinning all of your work is done on the head gusset piece you don't try and pin it in from this side and you certainly don't sew it from this side. So for the most even result, all of your work is done on that head gusset piece. So now all we need to do is turn this one through. I want to make sure, first of all, that I've really got that little front seam opened and pressed out as flat as I can before I turn that all through. Especially on that front there where that little chin seam turns. Then we're going to pop that one through. And here is where it's really important to push out all of those seams and to roll them out. And you can use your knitting needle if you like to get those seams all pushed out particularly that front nose section and then I'm just going to roll those seams out every little seam all the way around and so now once we've got all of those seams all rolled out nicely we've got a neat little head there we can go ahead and start filling now I'm going to use my forceps although with heads I have to say with three piece heads I do tend to use my hands I tend to fill with my fingers though I do pack in first of all that little nose section first just get some in there just to push out that front nose section remember to support that area there while you're filling you don't want to put forceps right the way through your fabric and it's just a matter of getting just some filling at the beginning in the front there. I've also got my wool felting needle ready. I use wool felting needle to pack my stuffing in to get a really nice tight effect. Now I know you get tired of me saying we're going to pack this head really firm but all of your additional putting the eyes in and sewing the nose and the mouth and adding your ears it's much much easier for you if you have a really firm packed head a softly filled head is a nightmare to work with to add all of your little additional pieces so now from here I tend to fill with the little mouth nose section pointing towards me and I tend to tuck my stuffing in this way and I'm filling out I'm being very mindful of filling out either side of the eye sections here so going from side to side and I will continue to fill right up to the edge here just a little way from the edge just to leave enough room for us to do a little running stitch to pull that uh, neck in from the joint now if you're going to be using safety eyes for this project you will need to temporarily stuff this head mark your eye placements unstuff the head add those safety eyes before you continue um, the rest the nose and the ears and the mouth we, we can do afterwards um, 
I thoroughly recommend, unless you're making this for a very small child who needs safety eyes, I do recommend using the pull-in eyes, the classic teddy bear eyes that I'm going to be using today, just for a, a, a better result. So, but if you, if you are making it for a little child, of course you must use the safety eyes. So I'm going to continue packing there and stuffing that head until that one is all nice and firm. Okay, so you can see there that I've got that little head all filled out nice and firm. You should have a nice even sweep up the front there, over the top of that head and everything nice and straight through here with your filling. That has absolutely very little give in it at all. The trick to filling that muzzle nice and firm is like I said, filling this way with your hands evenly either side and then once you get coming up to here, coming up to the top, you can take your forceps and you'll be able to tuck in to that muzzle from under the chin until it's all packed out nice and firm. And of course, I've been using my wool felting needle throughout to keep that filling packed down into that muzzle and also now to pack this in, adding layer on layer and tucking it all in with my needle. So I've got a nice flat surface there. So now I've taken my doubled, uh, a double strand of extra strong thread on my needle and I have sewn a running stitch all, all the way around that neck edge there, just about five millimetres in from the edge. Now, if you are sewing the head on, you still need to pack to this level, you still need to pack it nice and flat but you um, won't be doing a running stitch around the edge. You should have your little edges turned like I, like I showed you earlier. And you would now go ahead and add that to your body, which would be already stuffed. If you want to see how I sew a head on, if you have a look at the, my little animal doll bunny, fox or bear, you can see that technique there. I'm going to be jointing mine. So we're now going to just pop in our little neck joint that's all assembled there and all I need to do is pull on those thread ends and I want to pull that little neckline in right around that bolt make sure everything's nice and tight and firm and keep that tension up and I will knot that one off at least four times before snipping those thread ends. And that has that little neck bolt nicely, neck joint all nicely tied in there. Our next step, our next step is to add our nose because we do our nose and mouth features before our eyes because we get better eye placement if the nose is in place. And I like to at this point, whenever I'm making an animal, I like to have a little pot or something like that that I can sit that little head in. It just helps me manage it all better. And so I've got my little nose template here and I've got it covered in glue, just my clear craft glue on the back. The positioning of this little template is we just want the top curve to just sit over our seam line here. And obviously we want that to line up with our centre seam. So I'm just going to drop that into place there and make sure that the top of that nose just curves over a little. You want to make sure it's all nice and straight. Remember we're sewing over this template. But it's really important that it's all nicely lined up for you because that's really your sewing guide. Make sure all those edges are pushed down, that that center is lined up there with your center seam. Cup your hand over it, which will help curve that over the end of the nose. The warmth of your hand will help to start to set that glue. Remove any residue there. Don't worry about anything on the top of that template because the stitches will cover it. And then we're going to let that one dry. It needs to be absolutely perfectly dry for the best result. So that's what we're going to do. So about 20 minutes or so, 
will be fine. So while that little one is drying there, we can go ahead and put the ears together. So we've just got our little ear pieces and we're just putting right sides together, lining everything up. Now on your pattern templates, I haven't got it on mine, I'm so used to making these. You'll have two little marks there at the base that show you where to stitch from. And we're actually going to just sew from it's around about here all the way around the top edge and back to this side and we leave a little opening your marks will show you where that is and I do sew the top edge of the ears two times just because that's the point that gets the most stress when we're turning it through and I also reinforce the stitching on the little corners because we're going to be really poking those corners out so stitch that one together and then you can turn it through and then I like to take it to the iron put once you've pushed them all out those edges take it to the iron and give it a little press and also press that little edge under the little opening you see it's pressed under there so let's go ahead and put that little ear together Okay, so that has my little ear all stitched and turned through. You can see I've pressed those little edges under there as well. Now, this is a little uh, secret tip here that I like to do when I'm working with fabric and I'm not going to put in a special ear liner. I have taken my some clear craft glue and I've just got a little wooden skewer here. I'm just going to roll some clear craft glue on the end of that wooden skewer. And I'm going to carefully open that ear up and I'm going to take that skewer in, avoiding those little edges and just put some glue on the inside. Just because I want to seal those two edges together. Because a cat's ear isn't two pieces, it's one piece. And also by adding this little bit of craft glue, we get a little ear, this one's already glued, it's much firmer. So when we go to sew that one on, it's going to hold its shape a lot better. So that's just a little tip, I use it all the time. If you don't want that little puffy look with the two piece ear, just a bit of craft glue in the middle. And also it helps to just curl that ear a little while it's drying you can have it start to curl in that nice little shape that we're going to be moulding onto the top of the head. So I'm going to put that one aside now and we, we usually I don't even have to close that opening because a bit of glue there has sealed that. So they're all ready and we will put those aside and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to be sewing our embroidery stitches over our nose. So to stitch over my little nose template, what I have here is two strands of um, pearl thread and I'm using an eight ply. And another little tip here is when you're sewing over a nose template, put the two ends of your double thread through the eye of your needle, not the folded end, because that way, if you make a stitch that you're not happy with, you can pull your needle off remove that one stitch, re-thread and continue on. You won't have to lose all of your stitches by cutting out of your little needle. So that's just a little tip. We always sew noses that way. So to start, I'm going to dive in at the bottom of the head at that neck joint there. I'm just going to come out at the base. That little knot in the end will hold it. And I'm going to dive back in that same hole and I want to come out at the base of the nose template there. So it's just a matter of taking your medium dull needle. Now I do use a medium one for this. You, can, you could use an even longer one, um, but I just find we don't want too many holes showing. So a medium is better and finer. So I'm aiming to come out just at the base, the very base on that seam there, base of the nose. And that's my needle through the base. It's just slightly to one side. The reason for that is we're going to be adding our little mouth section in and we're going to be putting a stitch straight down the center there. So just off to one side to begin with is fine. So now, and you'll notice too that I'm using a pink thread over the top of my tan colored felt. 
which is absolutely fine and I don't mind if a bit of that tan shows through so I've got my two my first stitch there everything's held nicely into place and I make sure my stitches aren't twisted as they're going over that template make sure you can see that properly and I'm going to line that up and I'm going to pop my needle in at the top there to make my first stitch and I'm going to bring my needle out right next to where I first started there ready for, to place my next stitch so you can see that's my first stitch in place nice and straight and I've pulled both of those threads so that's tugged down nice and tight so we're going to just repeat the process line up that one right next to it and you can see I'm going to take my needle in at the top again and I'm going to come out just at the base right next to my last stitch and I'm going to work my way up repeating that just to cover that whole side of this little template when we get to the end here we're going to dive our needle in on our last stitch and we're going to come out the opposite side and then we're going to continue just to make those stitches over the top and I'll show you when we get to the end here so there you can see I've made my way across that template and it really is just a matter of practice with stitching noses you'll get used to it I totally always recommend using a template sewing a shape on a little stuffed head like this without any kind of shape beneath it it's just very challenging and I would never do it another way no matter how many I've sewn um, and so now we've going to we've finished our last stitch so our final stitch is going in at the side there and we're just going to exit out the back of the head and also you'll realize now why it's important to have a nice firm packed head because it just makes that job so much easier so I've just pulled that last stitch through I'm going to make sure that that is correctly placed pull that one in check that everything's nice and even once you've got that all right of course you can dive back in to that hole come out here and we're going to knot off at the base there so once that little nose is stitched into place we're going to do the same thing and thread up our doll needle again with a double strand again and I'm using black this time I've got a knot in the end and I've come out at the base and then come out in the nose now I've come out just above the base of that template and between those two stitches in the nose so it's nice and central so then I'm going to pull those two stitches down I'm going to keep them nice and straight again you want to make just a short little lip line for a cat because cats don't have a very long top lip line and if you make it long you really change the whole look of your little cat so we're going to be diving in in there right on that seam line and we're going to be coming out where we want the edge of our little smile to be so it might take a few goes to work out exactly where you want that you can take your thread and wrap it around your needle and pull it up to that lip line and it can give you a bit of an idea of where your little smile is going to be once you're happy with that position you can pull that one through again you want to make sure that those stitches aren't twisted as you pull that one in that's got our little lip top lip in there and so our next step is we're going to take our needle underneath those two stitches we're not catching any fabric we're just slipping them underneath there this is the best way to sew a mouth in on any animal and get a lovely even result I'm just checking that my stitches are twisted again and I'm placing them holding my thumb there and I'm going to pull that one through and I can get some nice tension on that little mouth there a real nice little pull in a bit of sculpting there and then all I'm going to do is dive in the other side match it up with this one I'm going to exit at the back of the head as we did before with the nose and just cast off there so do but do give it a bit of pull in 
So you're pulling in that top lip line and creating a little chin there. There we go. So that has our little nose and mouth all stitched into place, all nicely pulled in. I am going to do a little bit of colouring around that mouth, but we'll wait till we've popped the eyes in. So next you need to get organised with your eye placement. So I use, I've got teddy bear eye placement pins. And they're just an eye shape on a pin. They come in all different sizes. You can get them from most teddy bear suppliers. That just helps you choose your eye placement. Now you need to be sure it tends to sit just in the centre of that little dip there. Um, you want to make sure that they're exactly the same and far enough apart. You can see how far from that seam I have mine. Eye placement is very important. Make sure that you've got it all lined up and when you have you can pop your little eyes in and just test. Now I've got two different eyes there. The little trick that I was going to tell you about, if you're using the glass coloured eyes, which are a, the glass itself is actually coloured, they're not painted from behind, depending on what colour fabric is underneath you tend to lose a lot of your colour um, which can be annoying so a little trick that I use is I actually with this one you can see this one has a little felt backing that I've added to the eye and the way that I do that is simply that I take my little eye and I add some glue to the back of it there all around the back of it and I've got my little piece of felt and I've made a hole in there with my awl and I can just push that through and really glue that down. I actually have little holes drilled in my work desk where I actually settle them in and they will sit there and dry. When they're completely dry you can then trim off the excess and what you end up with is a little eye that has that very clear blue that won't be hidden, that won't uh, detract from the, it stops the fabric from detracting from the colour of the eye, so you've blocked that out. So, and while that might look a little bit starey and stark, once that's pulled in and I do a little bit of colour work around that eye, it will settle them in nicely. And cats do have very startling eyes, so I really want to depict that. But of course you could go for a more storybook look and just use a black eye, just a simple black button, something like that. And if you are, a shank button is best. And we're going to have a look now at how we pop those in. So to pop in our eyes, first of all I've taken my awl and I've made those passageways for those eyes to go through, nice and definite. And I've gone all the way through. And I've got a doubled strand of my extra strong thread folded over in the middle and I'm going to take that folded end through the loop of my little eye or perhaps you've got a shank button through that shank open up that loop and take the ends back through so what you end up with is four strands coming off of that little eye so it's going to be nice and strong and so next we're going to take our large doll needle which I always use for my eyes and I'm going to take those threads through So I've got that one already on that, threaded up on that needle. And so we're simply going to dive in straight through that mark you've made. And we're going to come out at the back of the head as low as we can, right in the center there and pull that one all the way through and take that one off. So we've got that one, we've made sure that that little shank is nice and firm. If you pull on that little eye, you can check your eye placement, that one will pull in nicely. And so the next thing we're going to do is repeat with the other eye, thread it up just the same, dive in, take our needle through, 
but this time we're going to bring our needle out through the same hole that we came that we started in so you can enlarge that little hole with an awl to make it easier for your needle to find it coming through that second eye so now we have both of those eyes in place and both those threads out the back through that same hole and all we need to do I tied my initial first knot in those it's just a matter of pushing down on those eyes pulling on each of those threads independently and knotting off once you've got the tension right and everything even very hard to show you on camera but um, just give it a good squeeze make sure it's all lined up and even keep that tension up and then you can knot that one off into the head so it's being knotted off into the stuffing not the surface of the head so once you've tied it off a few times you can snip those thread ends and that knot will be lost into the head beneath the fabric and we can just repair that little the little hole there it's just parted thread so it will come back so I'm just going to get those tied off and sunk nice and deep so there we go now you can see that I've got those eyes in place and now if you like you can go ahead and do a little bit of shading now I've just colored up just under that little nostril area just very very lightly and some flesh tones there and I'm using a polychromo pencil this is an ordinary wax pencil um, and I use Faber-Castell I have always drawn with Faber-Castell in my illustration it's a nice firm pencil and it's great for fabric so now if you are going to be giving this doll to a child to play with then I would advise using the polychromos because they won't shift and they won't smudge if you are not if you're just having this little doll for display you can go ahead and use your pastel pencil which is of course a chalkier substance but it is still very permanent um, but it will smudge so it's not something I would use for a child's toy but that's what I'm going to use around the eyes so you can see that I've added a little bit of color so just under that line there takes that little mouse section in and just tugged up under that area too and then you can go ahead and you can see there I've just drawn in just the surround of the eye and extended it out just a little bit to create that eye corner there and that way I've been able to color up all around that eye and it has just settled it in and given us that look of a little realistic little eye so I'm just going to repeat that and make sure that it's all lined up with the other side just to settle those eyes in beautifully so you don't have to do this and if you're using just buttons or going for a more of a storybook sort of a look you don't have to do that but it is a lovely little finish so there we have our little kitty all of the face shading done do as much or as little as you like and I don't add whiskers to my creations uh, usually I don't add them ever unless I'm making a really um, realistic uh, one of a kind piece and in that case I use fishing line and it's it's internally added so it's very complicated um, I don't like the messiness of whiskers but you can certainly add them if you wish I've gone ahead there and just added a bit of shading there that indicates where the whiskers would be and that's enough for me I like that lovely clean effect so now we're going to go ahead and add the ears so your little ears are nice and dry now and you can see that they sit lovely and upright now sewing the ears on um, the ear positioning on this is very important also but there's a way that you pin them that will help them stand up nicely like that so you can see where I have them set there so I'm just going to pull these pins out to show you how I go about doing that so my pin goes through the very corner of that ear and then I take my pin and the position for these ears is just a little way inside it's maybe about a centimeter in from that side seam there and just a little way back so not too far back you'll try a couple of positions and see how you go so first of all I over angle that pin the opposite way as I'm putting that in first of all that's going to help us with a bit of lift there 
My next pin goes in probably about a centimetre and a half, just a little way back. So we've got our first one in, our second one in, and then that allows us to curl the rest of the ear around. Once we've got those into position, those first two pins, you can see you can get a lovely little curl and you can also make sure that that top line of the ear is sitting up. So now we drop that pin, that final pin right in the corner. And setting ears into place takes a bit of playing because they're not set into seams. We do have to really line them up and we have to match them up either side. So it's really just a matter of juggling them so you've got everything where you want it. Once you have one ear in the position that you really like, pop your pins in all the way around that edge to keep that ear base exactly where you want it. You've got a nice little curve there. Match your second ear up exactly the same, check it from the top and from the side, look at it from every angle and once you've got them into place I'm going to show you the best way to sew those on. So once you have those ears exactly where you want them now we're going to stitch them on and now I always use my medium doll needle to sew on ears because I sew my ears on a little differently than other people. So I started at the bottom again, I've gone in through that neck, come out here, taken my needle through I've got a single strand of extra strong thread and I've got a long uh, length of thread so that I don't run out. And I've just brought my needle out, you can see there, right on that starting position where that ear sits. So I'm going to pull that one all the way through. So I tend to sew my ears on whatever I'm making I sew them on back through the head. My reason for doing that, particularly with upright ears, instead of just sewing them on the surface of the fabric, which gives you basically a little hinge effect. effect. So that means that the ear can move, it can fall forward, it can fall backwards. What we really want is for them to stay sitting up. So I sew mine through, back and forth through the head so that what we're really doing is sculpting them in. So we're pulling them into the head. And if you pull on anything like that, it immediately makes it sit up better. So, and it's, it's much easier to sew them on this way. So my first stitch goes into the ear itself. Just take a little bit of that ear and you're going to dive in to the head and you can come out anywhere at the side there. Pull that one in. So that's your first stitch that's pulling down the front. You see how that's pulling down the front of that ear? Keep that tension up. We're going to go back into that little hole that we just came out of. So we're not going to be leaving any marks there. Then we're going to come out again and I'm going to reinforce that stitch. So I'm coming out just the other side now. See how that little, that little stitch has gone? And we've traveled a different pathway. So you're not coming back, just coming back on yourself. So I'm gonna take another little stitch just on the inside there. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come out somewhere else. This is easier because you're taking long stitches and you're not trying to get into little tight areas. You're going back and through each time. So you can see that second one has pulled that front down also. See how nicely secured they are into the head and how it's immediately made them sit up. So now I go back into that same hole again and we're gonna come out somewhere on the base of that ear again, whether it's back or front, it really doesn't matter. I 
I really like to anchor that front down so I like to do quite a few stitches at the front section there there we go so my next stitch is going to go straight in where that pin is and so that's three stitches anchored at the front there and that will be more than enough to hold that little front of that ear in place and then you just work your way back and forth through around that little ear edge right down to here and when you finish do the same as you did at the at the beginning and do two or three stitches really close to that end and then you'll just end off down the back here underneath and and uh, cast off and tie off your knots and that's for, for in my opinion it's the easiest way to sew on any sort of plush ears so there we go that has my little kitty's ears stitched into place you can see how nice and upright they sit by using that technique it does take a little bit of practice and i have to confess sewing ears on is my most hated task um, but you really do get used to it and and that technique will help you out a lot i hope so I've then gone ahead, I've just used a little bit of uh, my soft pastels here, taken a little on my brush and I've just deepened those little ear curves in there. It's totally optional, you don't have to do that but I just like to increase that depth there. So that has our little kitty head all complete and now all we need to do is we're going to create the little collar it goes around her neck before we join her head to her body so we can just pop her aside there she can watch and we're going to start with our little collar so in your little collar you'll find that you've got a little mark to make a center hole and I've gone ahead there and pushed that one through and put my knitting needle through to make it large enough to slip over that bolt you may have a cotter pin but it needs to slip easily over that bolt so that one in place our next step is we're going to be sewing with right sides together we're going to fold this over and we're just going to take this one to the machine and with a tiny little seam we're just going to sew this little seam here and that's what that's going to do is just pull that in so that when we add it it will sit down that little collar will sit down around the neck so we just get that little one stitched into place so that has that little seam stitched there which as you can see that's just given that little collar some dimension there now a couple of things you can do from here you could add a little lace trim around this uh, edge or you could do what I'm going to do I'm going to sew a little blanket stitch right the way around that outer edge and I'm just using something that will coordinate with my little print of my uh, little skirt and dress on my little project so a blanket stitch is just a simple matter of taking your needle through I'm using pearl thread here you can use anything that you like taking my needle through and bringing that needle out through the loop I've got a video that shows you how to sew a blanket stitch I'm going to put the link up the top there for you if you want to check that out but you can see I'm going to keep my stitches nice and small and nice and even and rotate my work as I go and that will just give a lovely little finishing edge to that collar so I'll just make my way right around the edge till I come back to here so there we go that has my little collar all ready to attach now you may not be using a collar you might want to use one of my other little patterns I've got a few I'll show you at the end uh, a little neck ruffle perhaps if you're making a little boy you won't use the collar that's entirely up to you and of course you can embellish this little collar any way that you like so what we will do now is we're going to attach the little head to the body and we were going to pop that little collar in the in the middle of that joint um, before I do that I do want to show you this little head that was from my little Easter Bunny that a lot of you have seen and made up is the perfect little head to also add to this body so just going to show you how that will look popping that one through you can see that little result would be 
absolutely gorgeous on this little doll so perfect little change up there another version of a little bunny doll um, and I hope that some of you will give that a try because I would love to see that little doll put together you can see it works really well so but for now we're adding a little kitty head so off with their heads <laughs> off you go bunny and we are going to add our little kitty so kitty's head there line that up with the front and we're going to pop that through that little hole that I've got ready made turn that one over and we're going to add our little disc our washer and a little bolt just going to make sure that I have everything lined up nicely and that I don't have any fabric caught up in that joint I want it all pulled out nice and smooth so just finger tighten that one for now And you can see we've well, got that little effect of that little collar sitting across those shoulders there so all I need to do is make sure that there's no fabric caught up within that joint I'm going to go ahead and use my spanner to tighten that little one up make sure that there is still room for movement so that little head is nicely poseable but you want all of those uh, layers compressed together well and then I will just go ahead and add a little drop of super glue right in the little thread there of that bolt if you're using a cotter pin joint of course you will just wind those ends down and then we will go ahead and we will just fill with our polyester filling that little body so there we go that has our little kitty doll or little body all packed beautifully there you can see how nicely that little collar sits there just frames that neckline up beautifully so now I've gone ahead and I've taken my wool felting needle I've packed all of that filling in so it's not jumping out at me and we're going to sew up our back opening so I've taken an extra strong thread a single thread and I've got a big old knot in the end and you can see that I've just come out at the start of where that seam starts to open up there right at the side of it within the seam allowance so that's my first stitch so my next stitch this is called a ladder stitch it's a closing invisible stitch I do have a video that shows you how to sew this one I'll put the link up the top there for you but we are just going to travel across now and do the same on the opposite side and we pressed our edges under at the beginning of our project so it's nicely tucked under there so I've taken my first stitch and I'm going to keep them quite small so you can see that first stitch has gone straight across give that one a pull in then we're going to travel back and we're going to go back into that first hole that we first came out of and we're going to travel down the same distance as we did on the other side at the seam allowance take that one through and you can see as we pull in that's going to close that little opening so we go back across to the other side take that little stitch again you need to keep your stitches even as you travel down so that they close evenly otherwise you'll end up with some puckering at the end so I'm going to give that a good squeeze push those edges together and you can see that that's going to close that opening up beautifully now as you go and you're making your way down make sure that you do squeeze and pull those threads up as you work as you go to take your next stitch it will naturally slacken off a little but it has memory and you you give it a pull and it'll go back to where it should be if you travel all the way down and then try and pull all of those stitches up they won't knit together nice and tight and that's what we need so keep tugging on those as you go down and you just need to make your way down 
until you've closed that opening. So there we go, that has our completed Little Miss Kitty. I've gone ahead and added a little pearl necklace there and also I've popped on her skirt. Now I have the pattern for the skirt. We have Little Miss Bunny here. She has the neck ruffle and the little pendant there and the little skirt. That video tutorial is also available and also a little Mr. Bear there. He has his overalls and his scarf and you can certainly mix all of these pieces together. And then of course we have little Miss Fox and she wears the little jacket, the skirt, the scarf. So you can really um, make them in so many different ways. And do remember to give that little one a try where you use my little Easter bunny head and add it to one of these dolls. So lots of options for you. I hope you've enjoyed seeing little Miss Kitty. Well, thank you all for watching today. Hope you've enjoyed seeing little Miss Kitty come together. I've got an arm for now, haven't I? And I'm going to be adding to this series. So looking forward to that. If you have enjoyed this video, you could give me a thumbs up. That would be absolutely beautiful. If you're wanting to share pictures with me, and I do love to see all of your pictures of your finished work. Um, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. You can follow me on Pinterest, just Lisa Pay on Pinterest send me pictures directly there and I will pin them straight onto our shared Pinterest board just to show off your beautiful work and everybody is doing amazing. I'm seeing the skill levels come up and up and up and that's so exciting for me to see. You can also come along to a lovely Facebook group we have. I'm going to put the link in the description box below where you can share your finished creations and you can also see what everybody else is doing and it's a great little group so I hope you do that come along and see you can always follow me on Pinterest and you can check out what I'm doing there I try and give you a little heads up sneaky peek of the projects as they're coming together and I love to hear from you um, any questions or technical things you want to know you can always talk to me on Instagram as well so I'm busy designing and I'm hearing all of your requests and I'm absolutely loving your work and it's keeping me going. So keep those pictures coming. In the meantime, make sure that you all stay safe and creative and uh, most of all, when something good comes to you in your day, make sure that you share it and pay it forward. Until next time, it's Huru from me.